What is up YouTube? I'm the nice one, and I hope you're enjoying this spring weather. This week, I got another step-by-step -step tutorial video on how to make some kick-ass, low-poly anime hair for your Blender characters. The setup is the same as last time, I got the shortcuts in the bottom left corner, and I'm going to try my best to say the shortcuts I'm using out loud as I go through it. But if you have any questions, or if you have more suggestions on things you'd like to learn, let me know down below. Stay tuned for next week when we make a Tifling Hexblade, but until then, sit back, relax, and let's get a haircut. So looking back at that character model that I had made before, I'm just going to use this as a base and give this guy a little bit of hair. Um, so for now, let's just hide it. But basically what you're going to do when you open Blender is basically box select everything and delete the, the default options. Now before I keep going, I forgot to mention, looking down at OSD hotkeys, you'll be able to see the shortcuts I'm using. Uh, if you ever get lost, just look down here, but as best as I can, I'm going to try and make comments. I'm going to try and say what I'm using as I go through it. But let's get started. I'm going to try and keep this down to 15 minutes if I can. Alrighty, here we go. So hide the original model and then go Shift A and let's create a Bezier curve. Uh, I don't like the way that's oriented, so I'm going to just RZ and go 180 to kind of flip it around. Go GY, uh, GX, sorry, and bring it over here. Now go Shift D to duplicate that Bezier curve, and then go GY to bring it up. Now I'm going to make something else. Go Shift A and make a circle. And then let's position that as well. So go GY, bring that down, G x bring it over here and uh, before i keep going i'm gonna a bit of an explanation so my process is really great when you're making procedurally generate not procedurally but like very stylized hair because it's all geometry based there's no you're not using any modifiers you're not using any special effects the thing you do miss out on is that there might not be any physics that you'll be able to apply to it, but it's going to be great if you're trying to make a stylized character that really does look like those anime games you used to play or anime shows you used to watch. So if you're looking to make stylized hairstyles, this is the video for you. But let's keep going. So once I have these three uh, curves, these are going to be the base of the hair. So let's go here. Let's select the middle one and go N to pull up the attributes. And let's just call this hair lock. Let's pull up this and we'll call this uh, taper. And uh, this and we'll just call it bevel. Now click into hair lock and navigate to this da data panel over here. And in the bevel object, taper object, what you're going to do is you're going to hit the, the eyedropper icon here. And then you're going to hit the bevel icon. You're going to hit the circle that you named bevel. And you see how what happens is that you end up getting this tubular structure. Uh, this is going to kind of give the weight to the hairstyle, but as you can see, this isn't exactly what we're going for. We need that nice like pointed shape. So in order to get that, you're going to go eyedropper tool again, and this time you're going to apply that eyedropper to this taper object right up here. And boom. Now you got a nice kind of basic, like a, a start, a start for how the hair is going to be. So that's looking great so far. Um, there's a few things we can do now to kind of give it a little more detail. If you tab back into the circle object here by going object select and then go into edit mode, what you can do is you can actually change the proportions of this hair lock. So I'm going to select these. Actually, I'm going to go A and select all of the points. Make sure they're all align handles so that they're going to change color. Select these two handles over here. Select these two handles and maybe scale it down a bit. So that what happens is that they flatten out along the Z axis, as you can see. So I'm going to control Z. See how it's, see how it's kind of rounded here. If I scale it in or scale it in, they flatten out along the Z axis. Now if I take these two and then I scale this in as well, you can get a nicer kind of shape going to it. Now something you might also want to do, if you want to add a little more detail to your hair lock, a good thing to do is select all the points here, go space, and go look for subdivide. Subdivide curve, 
and now you're adding more vertex points along the curve. And what you can do is select this curve over here, for example, hit free on the handles, and then go G, Y, and then G, X. And what happens is, I think this is on the other side. Yeah, there it is. See how it gives this little cut here to give it kind of that anime look when it, you got that cut going through the middle of the hair to give it a little more detail. You can do that to give your hair, uh, you know, some variation. So we'll do the same over here. G, oh no, sorry, make it a free handle. G, move it here, and then just, yeah, that's good. And then do this one. G, move it in, brilliant. G, this in, okay, yeah, I like that. And you can really use these free handles as a way of making it kind of, uh, what's the word? Varied. So this is great for if you want to vary the hairstyles as as you add your locks to your model. So that's not looking too bad. So now we got a base hair model going. We got a base hair lock right here. So tab out and then tab, select this hair object and then go into edit mode. Now this is what makes the hair my approach to hairstyle anime hairstyle really awesome is because this hair is now generated using a simple bezier curve that you see right here. And all you have to do if you really want to adjust the position, adjust the scale, is change the position of the vertex. And you can even change the curve of it and add more vertexes as you go along, right? So you can see how this is a much more streamlined process as opposed to box modeling hair, anime hairstyles, because you can just go back to object mode, duplicate this, and now layer your hair. And you can even go a bit farther by creating more of these bevel shapes and more of these curve shapes if you want to add even more variation to your hairstyles. So let's go in ahead and do that. Now that we have our base models going, oh, actually, you know what? I did forget one thing. So what we want to do, what we want to make sure to do and not forget to do, is make sure that the origin of the hair lock is at this point or whatever point you want the hair, the root of the hair to be. So what I'm going to do is go G, Y, or actually I'm going to go Shift S and cursor to select it. Make sure the 3D cursor is at the origin point. G, uh, Y, no, G, X, and bring it over here so that that point is basically at the bezier, at the Cursor point, go Control Alt Shift C, and let's go Origin to 3D Cursor. Now that the origin point is at the root of the hair, it's gonna be a lot easier to scale this up along the X and Z axis. So for example, SX, you can kind of bring it up a bit longer, SY if you wanna bring it a bit fatter. So that's why we want, we want the origin point to be at the root of the hair. It just makes our life a lot easier as you're going through the process. So control Z, control Z. Now let's start adding the hair locks to our model. So control, if I go Alt H, I should be able to see the character model that we built last week. I'm gonna use this guy as a base, but you guys can use whatever character you've used in the past before. Now, before we start adding the hair locks to the model, what we wanna turn on are a few options here. You wanna turn on snapping. You want to go snapping to face, go snap to active, and then enable these two options right here. Align with the with the target normals, and align the individual objects. So what happens is if you go G, and then you start bringing it to the model of your that you're using, the origin point is actually going to snap to the to the face of the of the model that you're using as a base. So for example, you see how the base is snapping to this snapping to this plane right here. Having these options selected is gonna be really easy. It's gonna make your life a lot easier as you're gonna go through and kind of add more locks of hair. You, you don't have to, but frankly, I think it makes your life a bit easier. And also it points, it aligns it to the normals that the faces are pointing. So again, it's all about making your life easier, right guys? So, Let's start just now that we have the hair lock. Actually, I'm going to move this down a tiny bit. Like maybe I want a hairline to be about here. 
And so let's just start kind of positioning his hair so that he's got some sick, wicked anime hair going on. Let's go like this, go like that. And sorry, basically all I'm really doing is I'm selecting these Bezier curves and bending them according to where I want, how I want the curve to be, right? So that's nice. Oh, it's kind of going all crazy. Uh, actually, as you're adjusting the Bezier curves, I like to turn off snapping so that you don't get some weird snapping going on as you're adjusting the curves. It's great as you're placing new hair locks, but as you kind of want to adjust them, it does make your life a bit harder. I've found so far, at least. Uh, and yeah, boom. Okay, that's a decent first hair bang. I like that. It's kind of jutting out like crazy, but yeah, that's a good start. Okay, great. So that's our gonna that'll be our first hairband. And so I'm gonna go shift D and duplicate. Now I'm gonna turn back on snapping and I'm just gonna position that like right beside. Maybe right here. Yeah, overlapping. And then go again back to modifying the Bezier curves, turn off snap, G, G, G. Yeah, and then just curve it out a little bit more put that like here let's say go that and you know go into object mode and let's go scale X you know just to kind of thin it out maybe scale Y yeah that's not bad cool 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 turn off snapping and uh, yeah so basically I'm gonna go around and add his hair incrementally it might be yeah it might be a little bit of a tedious process Yeah, it might be a little bit of a tedious process, but frankly, it's a lot simpler than if you were to bring in box model hair, anime hair entirely, so. There's some, there, you, 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 you gotta make some sacrifices here and there. But it's super relaxing, I find. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna put this here, let's say, go like that, go like this, and uh, just go around his entire head, adding layers upon layers of hair. Here, let's say, put this over here, turn on snapping, G over there, let's curve this like that, this, this, here. Yeah, cool, I'm feeling that. And remember guys, what you can do is create more of these kind of sample objects so that you can create a variety of different hair locks. You don't have to just keep duplicating this middle one. You can create a bunch of different ones and change the indent points, change the way the taper goes and all that stuff and yeah. So I think from here on I'm just gonna let it kind of time lapse play out as I fill out the rest of his hair. But basically guys that's pretty much my process when I'm making anime style hair for my simple models. I really hope you guys are able to follow along and I hope it found it helpful or useful. If you have any questions, feel free to just drop another comment or if you have more requests, just drop a comment and I'll see if I can make a video for that. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Anyways guys, I hope you liked the video. I'll talk to you later. Have a nice night.